for another session of War Chat, and we're joined by senior writer Corey S. Clark at WarChant.com, and we got a good one for you, Corey. We're going to, uh, we've done a lot, I think this is number six or seven, uh, I should know, but it, it's been a lot, yeah, we've got a really good one, we've got a great guest coming up, Marvin Snoop Menace, Florida State All-American wide receiver, and uh, kind of, I think, one of the underrated Florida State Florida games, 1999, there's all these classics, but I mean, this was a one versus three. And there was a lot, and it was a good game. It was a really good game uh, going down that went down to the wire. So it's good to talk about. This is, of course, 99. We're talking about the wire to wire season, which I think a lot of people they want to compare it to 2013, Corey. And this one, I kind of want to get your general feeling on that season. 2013, Florida State breezed through basically everybody the championship yeah. game. This was a lot difficult. They had a couple of really tough hurdles that they barely got by to get to the point to play Florida. To, you know, they were undefeated. You win, you're playing for the national championship. Yeah, you know, they, the 2013 team, like you said, kind of ripped through everyone um, except the championship game. The 99 team did not. You know, they were even only up Louis, on Louisiana Tech like 7-3 to three with, with, with 20 seconds left in the first half before Peter Warwick does the crazy you-can't-tackle-me move back and forth and back and forth. They barely beat Clemson. Uh, they barely beat Georgia Tech. That was a very good Georgia Tech team, but that game was a six-point game. The Clemson game was a three-point game. The Virginia game was close in the fourth quarter. So they were they were a great team, but they weren't an overpowering team uh, against you know decent quality competition. So going into that game, and I didn't and I didn't realize this, Gene. We and we will talk to Snoop about it. I didn't realize until I went back and read up on the game a little bit. I had forgotten that Florida was number three in the country. Yeah. And what that means is that if they had won that game then they are in position to play for the national championship. I had forgotten that. Their only loss that year up until that point, they were 9-1. and one. They had a one-point loss at home to Alabama in overtime. That was it. That was their only loss. It might even have been like a missed extra point. They lost on a block. Deck. I can't remember what happened. I think Sean Alexander was on that team. Um, that was the last good Alabama team, I think, until what's-his-name arrived um, in 2007. So, But Florida, Florida was a very good team and a almost, I would say, dominant defense. So I had forgotten that because they ended up after they lose to Florida State, they lose their next two games. They yeah. lose to Alabama again, and then they lose in the bowl game. And so they finish nine and four. And you look back and you're like, ah, well, you beat an okay Florida team, nothing, nothing special. Well, no, they were nine and one in the country, and they were in position to play for a national championship. And it was Florida State. And the last time Florida State had been in that building, Florida had cost them a national championship by beating them in the final minutes. So you can imagine. And Gene, I, I think you were there, right, in '99. Yeah. You, if you weren't there, you can imagine what that atmosphere and environment was like for that game. It was basically another game of the century. It was one versus three, just like Florida State and Michigan in 91, which we've already done one of these on. Um, and I just think when you look back at that framework of that, of that game, it's one of the best wins in Florida State history. On the road at number three with a national championship berth on the line against the program that two years earlier cost you a national championship in that same stadium, it's a great, great win. That's the thing. I'm sure I'll bring it up to stoop the environment there. And, I mean, you, you hate to give the folks down there credit, but, I mean, that, that place, when they smell blood in the water in the swamp, there's nothing like it. I mean, I've been to, I've been to Clemson. I've been to a lot of other – been to Oklahoma, a lot of places. I've just never it, – it's never gotten that loud where you can feel it's palpable, the excitement, yeah. whether it was 93, 97, 99, all those games at the end. I mean, it, it was just nuts in that place. But you're right. Going back to this team, I mean – they were trailing. I think they were fourteen to three. They were down in the second half to Clemson. I yeah. mean, they had a stage a big rally. This was a whole early in the year. You had the whole Dillard's Gate and all that nonsense that went on there. So there was a lot going on with this team at the time. And you're right. The big thing that came to mind is I think all the FSU fans that were in Gainesville that day all remember '97 when you were again you were playing for a national championship. That was a game that was going to get you in. You thought you had the better team, but. That time it didn't happen. You had the better team and you still lost. I mean, you knew you had the better team. Florida was good. But, I mean, with Winky and Warwick and all those guys, you're like, okay, in a really good defense, you're like, Florida State's a better team. But, it, you know, college football doesn't always work that way. So there was a lot on the line, a lot of nerves. And, uh, you know, they got it done. And that obviously led to the first ever wire-to-wire -wire season, a uh, second national championship for Florida State. Yeah, and, and going back to the game specifically, uh, Snoop, I would say, makes probably the biggest play of the game on offense. That's – that's a game – I think that was a – that capped a 99-yard drive, I believe, or a 98-yard drive. It was after yeah. the interception. So yeah, 98 yards. Yeah. That's a big catch down the sideline. They get the ball rolling. They're up 23-16. to 16. Um, They had scored 10 straight points after Winky's pick six. Janikowski bombed that 54-yard field goal. 
and then they scored another touchdown, so they're up 23-16, and they're going essentially to put the game away. And um, Snoop makes the big – at that point, the biggest play of his life uh, because Snoop Menace wasn't Snoop Menace back then. He was good. He was a junior. He had moments. He played in national championship games. But he wasn't the All-American that he became the next year. He was – I don't – not an afterthought. He wasn't an afterthought. He was a good, solid player, but he wasn't a star – and he wasn't the guy you would think would make the game-clinching play in a moment like that. And maybe Florida didn't either. But uh, that's a great play for him. I think that kind of – and we'll talk to him about it. I think that kind of propelled him into 2000 where he yeah. became the All-American. And if you go look at those 2000 numbers, they're ridiculous. They're, that's one of the best seasons in school history from a guy that the year before it had like 30 catches. So for Snoop Minnis in particular, that is a great play. You go up 30 to 16 with whatever that would have been, seven minutes to go, eight minutes to go in the game. And with that defense, he kind of knew it was a wrap. Um, so, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a huge play, a great moment for Winky after the pick six to come back and do what he always did. And, yeah, you, you know, I think the biggest difference, Gene, and we'll, we'll talk to Snoop about the, the two games, is in 97 you felt good, you felt like you had the best team, but you weren't completely sold with your quarterback. Yeah. I think by, by regular season finale of 99, I think we all knew, yeah, man, this guy is the real deal. Yeah, we get it. He's 56 years old. But he is the real deal at quarterback. He, he, he makes plays. He has poise. He can make mistakes and come right back. He has supreme confidence in himself. And so I, I, went, I remember going into that game thinking, man, Winky's not going to let Florida State lose. Winky and Warwick. And then even after the pick six, I'm like, yeah, man, Winky's going to come right back because that's what Winky does. And he makes a great throw to Snoop. Snoop makes a great adjustment on the ball. And uh, they, they go on to win the, win the game and win the national championship. Yeah, and you brought up Warwick, too. I mean, at the time, you didn't have a 97. But let's face it, he was the best player in college football that year. He just yeah. didn't get credit for it because the whole Dillers thing. But, I mean, to have him on one side, you said Winky and experience, one of the top quarterbacks in the country, if not the top quarterback in the country at the time, that was a big difference. And the last thing really is kind of what this meant for the rivalry. Because Florida, up to this point, going back to 87, Florida State was 9-4-1 against Florida. And most of those are against Spurrier. So you really had the upper hand on him. But, like you mentioned, you lost 97, you lost 98. So, you know, Florida's getting a little momentum in this series. If you drop this game, who knows? Florida State would go on to win four of the next five. After this, going up to 2003, we talked to, uh, of course, P.K. Sam last week on the war chat and talked about that game. But who knows how this series would have gone. If Florida wins that and wins three in a row, knocks four, stand on a national championship, there could have been a whole different narrative in that in the way that series played out. Well, yeah, I mean, Florida State had beaten Florida in 98 in dope. That was the – Oh, yeah, 98. Okay. That was the Rooster game. But Florida – that would have been Florida State's third straight loss at the Swamp. Right. In the previous two had both probably cost them national championship spots. I think if they beat Florida in 95 – they're probably playing Nebraska in the Fiesta Bowl. Now, they probably didn't want any part of that Nebraska team. So maybe Florida did them a favor. But I think Florida beating them in 95 kept Florida State from playing the national championship game. And I know that the 97 game not only cost Florida State playing in the national championship game, it cost Florida State a national championship because I think they would have handled that Nebraska team. So, um, so yeah, that's what you're looking at is it's been since 93. It's been since Ward to Dunn that Florida State had won in the Swamp. So to go there and do that against the number three team in the country, and not only do that and kind of it kind of just um, took all the air out of their balloon. So that probably made it even more gratifying that Florida just kind of pushed, cashed in their chips after that. It was like we we're not going to play anymore, and lost their final three games of that season. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that that was a big big deal to to win to win there on the road for the first time since '93. Yeah, you're right. When I think about that, too, in 95, and I was in the swamp also in 95, but you had you, – you, of course, you hated losing to Florida, but you had the feeling – I left there going, Florida was the better team in 95. Yeah. So it wasn't the same. That's why 97, I think, was so painful because not only playing for the national championship, but like I said, 95, if they win that game, they probably get housed by Nebraska anyway. But still, it's a different feeling when you lose to a rival when you know they're better. It's a different one when you know you're the better team. That's what really stings. And that's what you want to avoid is not only three in a row losses, but two in a row. And they went to Florida, your, maybe your biggest rival takes one away from you. Yeah, so it's, it was big. But we're going to talk to one of the key players from that game here coming up, and that's, of course, going to be Marvin Snoop Miss. Welcome back to War Chat. And we are joined by the man, the myth, Snoop Marvin Menace. 
a, an All-American, Census All-American at Florida State. And Snoop, you're joining us today to talk about a pretty good memory for Florida State fans. And that's always a good memory when you beat the Gators. So we're going to talk about the 99 game, which was quite – and that was the wire-to-wire season. Snoop, you guys went all the way, the first team ever to be number one preseason, be number one every week of the season all the way to the end. So, I mean, that, that had to be – just before you even talk about the game, what, what an incredible season that must have been for you personally to go through that with this team. It was an incredible season, you know, um, you know, to cap it off, you know, the way we did. You know, my, my, my mindset, you know, the reason I went to Florida State was first and foremost was to win a national championship, you know, so to get that – accomplished you know that was very special for me personally you know but um for my teammates as well man you know people they don't know they just see the games you know but we worked we worked so hard you know not being cliche but that's just what it is you know we worked so hard and our mindset every year was always to win the put ourselves in position to win the national championship you know so we trained so hard man we worked so hard we worked our, we worked our butts off you know and um you know, we had that virtually, you know, because I came in in 96. You know, in 96, you know, we lost to the Gators, you know, in New Orleans. And um, 97, you know, we lost to the Gators again. That stopped us from getting to the national championship. And then in 98, you know, we made it. And, you know, Winky got hurt, you know, unfortunately. And we lost to Tennessee, you know. So 99, that was actually just going to be um, Pete, Peter Ward's last year. That's going to be um, Ron Dugan's last year. You know, so that was, we looking at it like, this is our last shot at it. You know what I'm saying? So we got to get it done, man. And, man, our mindset, man, we wasn't going to let nothing stop us, you know, from getting to New Orleans that year, man. You know, man. One, of, <laughs> one of the things I think was cool about that time, Snoop, and I guess it's how it is with any great program, is, you know, you go into you, – you're going to a school. You're a highly recruited kid. You go to a school that already has Peter Ward. Right? They, heck, they might have had Randy Moss when you committed. And then you, you – even in 99, there's Laverne's Coles, there's Peter Ward, there's Ron Dugan. It's not a lot of balls to go around. Be like, and I don't want to be the old guy on the lawn telling everybody how it was in my day. I feel like now maybe there would have been, a, you know, maybe a push to transfer, to go somewhere else where I'm going to get, I'm going to get 50 catches or 60 catches here, which you ended up getting as a senior. But how do you – work that hard and stay up even if you might catch 25 balls a season or two balls a game when you know how good you are. But you're around other such such incredible players too. When your mindset is about winning games and winning championships, you don't care about personal stats. Right. That's how. And um, when I went there, you know, we had, like you say, we had – Randy Moss was actually my host when I, oh, when I, when, wow. when I, when I came on my visit. Um, but, yeah, we had – I knew all of this. You know, when I came to Florida State, I had coaches – give me the lineup, you know, of all the receivers who were there, you know, and learn, um, see the system they was running and whatnot, which was similar to my high school system. But, yeah, we had Randy Moss. We had Peter Ward. We had E.G. Green and Andre Cooper, which was both right. coming up thousand-yard seasons. You know, we had Ron Dugans. And Laverne is cold. He actually came in with me. Um, but he came in as a running back. That's um, right. Yeah. When, I got, when I got hurt, people don't know that when I got hurt, that's when Coles moved the receiver. Because oh, okay. I got hurt. Yeah, but um, – my personal stats, you guys, you got me? Yeah, I'm showing you a picture right there. There's that other guy who's with you that year. Oh, that's that's my he guy was, right he there. He turned out to be okay. That, that's, he turned out to be great, baby. That's my guy, man. Yeah, but, you know, even and Corn, you know, we was just deep at receiver. But the, the one thing about our receiver core, man, is nobody, not just myself, nobody um, really, like, focused on their personal stats. We was just about, you know, winning the game. Of course, we wanted to have those stats, you know what I'm saying? You know, because, you know, you feel good that – hey, you had a great game, you know what I'm saying? You really contributed into your team winning, you know, but that's never what's the main focus. So to answer your question, the reason that I was never looking to transfer or whatnot is because we was winning, and that's all I cared about was, you know, doing my job to help us win. Now, Snoop, you mentioned this. I was going to bring that up. You're a redshirt freshman in 97 when you guys go down there, and I, I was in that stadium too, and you completely – you outplayed them. We all know what happened in the end of the game. We don't want to relive that thing. But you got to be – you've been down there in this situation before. Florida is number three. You guys are number one, so you got two of the best teams going right here. I mean, was it just the motivation because you've been down there a couple times before you knew what you were getting into and what was at stake? I mean, you guys kind of had to feel you win this game, you're going to be national champions. Yeah, that was what, but um, playing, playing the Gators itself was the motivation. You know what I'm saying? Um, the national championship was the added motivation, you know? So, um, you know, I heard, you know, Coach Bowen, you know, he, he always say, you know, 
oh, we could lose all 10 games. You know, those would be the games at the end of the year. Right. You know, it's a successful season. You know, I, not to me. I don't want to lose all 10 games away just be the Gators. But being the Gators is still special, you know, to Florida State. You know, that's a, that's a heated rivalry, very intense rivalry. You know, and it's um, it's just it's just special rivalry. You know, but um, our motivation that year, Jane, was just that national championship because we had we 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 were so close. You know, on um, three years prior, you know, and to not um accomplish it, you know, we 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 was not going to let that slip through our hands that year. So, and they had a they had a really good defense. Um, I think Alex Brown might have been. The, I don't think he did anything in that game, but he was mm-hmm. their big name player. But they had a really good defense. They kind of shut down. Every SEC team they had faced besides Alabama, who had beat them by a point. I forgot how good that Florida team was. Uh, they ended up losing. You guys started them on a three-game losing streak, which I'm sure you're not sad about. But nope. <laughs> going into that game, they were 9-1. and one. Their only loss was by one point in overtime to a top-10 Alabama team. And then they're number three in the country. If they beat you, they're in position to play for the national championship. I – I guess it was kind of like a game of the century type vibe, and heaven knows you guys played two, of, two or three of those a year back then. But going into that week, the week of practice, the week of preparation, the studying, the game film, what was the scouting report, if you can remember? It's, I know it's 21 years ago now, of that, of that Florida defense of what you were going to try to do to them. Well, we wanted to spread them out. You know, um, um, I remember – I can't remember the scouting report, but I remember um, we did start – we normally run base – you know, two um, receiver set with Pete and Dudes. Uh, we started off with a um, Panther set, which is a three receiver set, which was me um, in the um, slot, Pete right. and um, Dude. So we spread them out. And um, I remember, you know, that first drive, man, we we um, we took the ball. We had the ball for like seven minutes, I think it was. Seven or eight minutes, you know what I'm saying? We went and scored on the first drive. You know, so we took the crowd out the game immediately. You know, but that was our thing, was spreading them out, you know, because we knew we could match up well with their cornerbacks. You know, and um, that's what we did. You know, they had the hearts. And then we was running tempo offense. You know, we was, right. we was running no huddle, you know. So, um, it was actually getting pretty gassed, you know, early. You know, and they was uh, getting a lot of penalties because they couldn't line up, you know, because we was going so fast. So, that was the game plan. And, Snoop, I like to go through kind of chronologically talk about that first drive. It's amazing. I went back and looked. It was an 18-play, 80-yard drive on yeah. the outset, your first drive. It was yeah. also amazing. I want to ask you about the game plan of this. I went back and looked. You guys had four different players under center. You had <laughs> Pete, who scored the touchdown at the end. Wildcat, before Wildcat was a thing, Pete was doing it back then. You had uh, Dan Kender in for a play, and you had Marcus Outson in there a couple of times. I mean, I, I'm guessing that was a game plan going in to throw a lot of different looks at Florida under center. Mm-hmm. Steve Spurrier wanted to come with two quarterbacks here, so we're coming with four, baby. <laughs> That's right. You doubled we're coming it. With two, we're coming with four, baby. You know? Yeah, but that's what it was. You know Coach Bauer, man. He always, you know, trying to throw the other team off, man. He did a great job, you know, scheming. And I thought, you know, going back to Marcus Allison, I know that year you guys would put him a lot because Winky's neck, if you guys were doing going to do a quarterback sneak, you would put him in to do the quarterback yeah. sneak, which I think, and I know we're fast-forwarding a game that we're not talking about, I just want to bring it up again. One of Mark Rick's best ever calls is in that fourth quarter of the Virginia Tech game where he put Marcus Alton again. Everybody thinks it's going to be a, a, a QB sneak. He tosses it to Travis. It's minor. That, yep. that spurs you to the win. So it had yep. to be cool back then. To you're, Obviously, Bobby Bowden was a legend, but that offensive coordinator was really, really good at what he was doing too. He was great at what he did, man. Mark, you know, uh, he skinned pretty well. You know, like if we run in um, short routes, you know what I'm saying? He set up the short routes for the um, play action. You know, if you notice when we play, you know, we ran a lot of play action. Yeah. But Coach, Coach Rick set that up, you know what I'm saying, with a lot of slants. You know, we run slants, slanted goals, you know, car goals, you know. Um, so Coach Rick was a great office coordinator. He don't get, his, he don't get enough um, his um, due diligence, but, yeah, man, um, he was one of the best coordinators I ever played for. So, Snoop, at that point, you guys, it's a defensive struggle. You score easily that first drive. And then you guys exchange field goals the rest of the game. You guys throw it inside the five-yard line twice, had to settle for field goals. So you're only up 13-6. You're dominating the game. So, I mean, what's going, what is Bowden, Coach Bowden, Coach Rick telling you guys at halftime you guys are only up seven points? He's telling us that we're doing a great job driving the ball down the field, but we got to punch it in the end zone, you know, because we're settling for field goals, you know. So that was what he was telling us. And we got to get in the end zone. Hey, speaking of field goals, just because you were on the team with him the whole time, what was 
Janikowski like? Did you have any type of relationship with that dude at all? Did y'all like? Janikowski was my dude. Okay. Janikowski took me to my first, I went to my first techno club with Janikowski. <laughs> I had no idea what techno music was. You know what I'm saying? Janikowski put me up on that, man. That's my guy. We call him C-Bass. He's got, because he's kind of, he's evolved. Even then, I think he, he was like a, uh, an instant legend in Tallahassee. Big yeah. kid, kind of, good athlete, Polish, huge leg. And it's just grown since there because he was in the league this whole time. But what did you guys think of him? Number one is, he, had you ever seen a kicker like that? And then he just seemed like such a different dude. We never seen the kicker like that, man. We knew, we knew once we cross, once we get to the fifty, man, we have field goal range. You know what I'm saying? Hey. <laughs> yeah, but Jelly Koski was a he was a real brother, man. He was like, man, I mean, we we vibe, we click, you know. Um, and he bonded with everybody, you know. Like, he's just a likable guy, you know what I'm saying? He somebody easy to get along with, you know? Yeah. So Snoop, second half, Florida comes out, kicks a field goal, and then the unthinkable, Winky throws a pick six. And you're dominating game, and suddenly you're down 16-13. And, I mean, you can tell us, you've been there a couple times, what is it like in the swamp when you're in the second half and you're and Florida's gone ahead of you? That place has to be just nuts, right? Yeah, it was nuts, man. That's that's the loudest away stadium that I've played in. You know, clubs, Clemson loud too, but Florida's was the loudest, you know, especially that year. But, yeah, when you get down in the swamp, man, your thing is to come back and answer right away. You know, because you don't want to get down two touchdowns. It's going to be right. tough, you know, with that crowd. Much. So our mindset, when it, when that interception happened was, okay, regroup, you know, let's go. You know what I'm saying? Let's, let's cancel back. You know, and that's what we did. Well, you did. Speaking of Janikowski, you guys tie it up, and that's the famous when uh, there's a penalty. Janikowski kicks a 49, 50-yarder. There's a penalty. He gets pushed five yards back and just boots it through a second time like nothing. And then he, he nope. makes it. He faces the Gator bench and does the chomp. I mean, you had to love that as a player to see him do that. <laughs> no pressure, baby. No pressure, man. C-Bag C had that swag. I'm telling you, man. He was a kicker, but he was just like the receivers, you know, and he was just like Winky. Winky had that swag, too. Winky, get up in your face after a playmate, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. And I wanted to ask you about Winky. So he throws the pick six. And I think every time that year that he had the, a team had taken the lead on you guys, and it wasn't often because y'all were really good, but y'all were in some close games. Anytime a team took a lead or tied a game, he immediately led another scoring drive. Now he's at that time, I guess, 27. I don't know how close you are with 27 year old Chris Winky. I don't know if the receivers and him are going out to the techno club together. <laughs> What was he like as a teammate? Because you just talked about he'd get in your face, and we know that. Like, he was kind of a hard ass. Um, but what was the relationship like with the receivers and the QB? And what did you guys think of the QB, his poise, his moxie, whatever you want to call it? We knew we was always in the game with him because of his poise, his moxie, his confidence, you know, his composure. Um, and Winky was one of the guys. We never, I never looked at Winky as – him being 27 years old, you know, like I don't look at that now until after my football career when in the media, you know, I see the media talk about, you know, Chris's age, you know, but us as his teammates, we never looked at him as, you know, being that much older than us. You know, we looked at him as being on our level, being equal, you know, being one of the guys. And that's what it was. Wink was one of the guys, man. Wink knew how to blend it in. You know what I'm saying? He knew how to be a leader, you know what I'm saying, and hold us accountable. But at the same time, he knew how to level off, you know what I'm saying, be one of the guys as well. You know? What did it look like or sound like when he was holding you accountable? Was he a hard ass? He seemed like one. Yeah, Winky going to get on you. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But it's not just Winky. You know, and that's the great thing about our team. It was everybody, you know, pretty much everybody. You know what I'm saying? And, and one thing about our team that I loved about our team and the reason we were so successful is we didn't, we didn't take that the wrong way. You know what I'm saying? We didn't we, – we, we embraced, you know what I'm saying, our other teammates holding us accountable. You know, like I, yeah. I told the story before, you know, Ron Dugans, you know, um, it was a um, pass that I dropped in the national championship game. It was a it was a short route, but it was a low ball. You know what I'm saying? But receivers like myself, Pete, Duke, you know, Anquan, uh, Coles, we catch those type of balls. You know what I'm saying? So I go to the sideline and Ron Dugans chews me out. You know what I'm saying? Tell me, catch the effing ball. You know what I'm saying? And what I say, I say, okay, I got you. You know what I'm saying? Next play, we got uh, not next play, but a couple of series later, you know, we had a third down and 15. And that's when I got the 25-yard catch, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? You know, I hope being held accountable, you know what I'm saying? Do what you're supposed to do. Right. 
So, Snoop, at this point, we're in the third quarter, midway. It's 16-16. That place is a frenzy in the swamp. And then I'm sure we didn't know it was going to be this big two games in a row, but Tommy Polly, underrated linebacker in special teams, what he did, he breaks through and blocks a kick. And you could just feel the momentum. And I remember that happening there. You could just feel the momentum change. When you get a big special team play like that, in a close game in the second half, that's usually going to turn it. So what, what's going on with you guys at that point when Tommy breaks through and blocks that kick? That's huge. That changed the momentum, bro. You know, because, you know, we had them up, you know, I think 29. I forgot the score. We was up by, I think, 14, you know, when they came back and they took the lead, you know. Um, and that was a huge momentum swing, you know what I'm saying? And that's when we went on our run, you know. So that was a huge play. You know, you need those plays, you know, because they don't always come from, you know, um, the offense, you know, got to come from the defense at times, got to come from the special teams, you know. And that's one thing about us is we took pride in our special teams, you know. And, there was a and I, just, I, just, I just talked to Tommy two days ago. Oh, good. I, I interviewed him on a podcast that I used to have about a year and a half ago. And he, I, I swear I think he told me this was true, that, you know, he was a, obviously a big-time basketball player too. He went to yeah, – A Baltimore, real deal. Uh, from, from Baltimore. And when, when he called – Spurrier to tell him he was going to Florida State. Spurrier said, "Well, that's okay. You're better at basketball anyway." And hung up. <laughs> For real? And that's what Tommy. That that's the story I heard. And then I asked Tommy about it on the podcast, and he said, "Yeah, that's kind of how it went down." So I'm sure that was really sweet for Polly to make those kind of plays against Steve Spurrier. But also, I wanted to ask you: Had did you ever get to play him in basketball? How good was that dude? Did you ever get to see him? I never got to see him playing basketball, but my high school was pretty good too. So we played in a lot of um, uh, tournaments. You know what I'm saying? I played against Kevin Garnett. I played oh, against, all right. I played against Chauncey Billups, you know, in high school. But I never played against TP. You know, but they was always one of the top um, teams in the country. I never how'd you, against, play, how'd you do against Garnett? We lost. <laughs> oh, what are you going to do, man? Yeah, nothing to be ashamed about. <laughs> we lost. <laughs> yeah. So after that snoop, after the block, you guys go and score, take the lead. Jeff Cheney has a little touchdown run. You get in there. And Florida tries to answer, and a couple of your defensive guys really came through on it. Uh, Tay Cody has the, the long bomb from Doug Johnson. He gets the one, one-handed one breakup, but they're still driving. And then Chris Hope gets that interception deep in your own end. But then you got you guys answer, drive down the field, and then you put the finishing touches. That's the touchdown you had on that play. And that had to be, at the moment, your biggest catch of your career, getting that touchdown against the Gators in the fourth quarter in the swamp. Yeah, Tay's play was huge because I think they was um, – I think we was up. Drop your up to touchdown. A touchdown, yeah. Yeah. So, and, yeah, and yeah, so if Tay don't get his hand on that ball, they score. You know? And then the next play, that's when um, Chris so, got the interception. Yeah. You know, so that was huge. And for us to go and um, answer, uh, I think Pete caught a long pass that, yeah. that drive, and then I came back with the touchdown. Um, so that was a critical moment, you know, um, in the game because it threw them off, and now it forced them to have to uh, pass, you know. Yeah. So they couldn't run now because they down two touchdowns now. But, yeah, my play, man, that was um, – when I got to the sideline, people was like, man, that, that's going to put you on the map, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and uh, – but that was a huge play. Um, actually, wasn't supposed to be a um, takeoff. It was supposed. It was called the um, out route. It was supposed to be a six yard out route. But um, the cornerback he played press. He played close up on me, so I had to adjust the route into a fade. And since they was in cover two, um, and he was playing a little outside, I drove him outside, and then I slipped like inside, and I widened away from the safety so I can get winky room to throw away from the safety so it don't be an interception. And we scored the touchdown. And after that, I went on the bench, chop them up. On that play, is- man, how much is that? Um, I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that wasn't the play that was called. I doubt many people do. Um, no, it wasn't the play call. It was a, it was a um, side adjustment. I adjusted so you, right. you guys make the adjustment. He adjusts with you, though. Uh, yes. Otherwise, he could be throwing it to an empty spot or to a corner. Yes. What kind of – I, I guess, what does that say about you, number one, being able to do that, how much you work on that, how much you guys have worked on that, and then you and uh, the same page? Yeah, you guys don't know. We study, 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 study. That's what, the, that's what, what when we go to the meeting room, that was the meetings for, you know what I'm saying? We're on the practice right. field. We got to take what we learned from the meeting room. You know, we got to study, study, study. Take what we take from the meeting rooms and, and take it on the um, practice field, from the practice field to the game field. And that's why, you know, it's hard for younger players to play early 
because it's a lot of adjustments that go on during the game, and it's fast. It's fast. You got to adjust fast because things happen fast, you know. And um, but that's what it was. And if I didn't read. I got to read the defense, and we can got to do the same thing. So we got to be on one accord. And if we not, he can throw it deep, and I will run six out, and it's an interception. You understand what I'm saying? So, right. Yeah, but yeah, that was a um, that was an out route. It was supposed to be an out route. It was adjustment that me and we can make. And then that, I, I was going to say, you, you Gene touched on it, but before that moment, we all knew you. I, I'm talking about as a, like a 23 year old Florida State fan at the time. We all knew you. We all knew you were good. But that seemed to be – I don't want to – I don't know if it sparks 2000, the 2000 season, but that play, like Gene said, had to have been the biggest play of your career at the time. And I know you had a ton of confidence in yourself. You're playing at Florida State in 1999. You're good. You know it. But does that even take it up another level? Like, man, on this stage against that team, those stakes, I just made a play that kind of puts the game away in that environment. It does. You know what I'm saying? That was – um. I look at it now, I think that is the biggest play of my career because that was actually the touchdown that took us to the national championship game. You know what I'm saying? So I would um, say that's the biggest play of my career. But, man, I always had confidence in myself, always believed in myself, and I always already knew what happened in 2000, you know, the year that I had. I knew I was going to have it because I knew my talent and I knew how hard I worked. I just need the opportunities. You know what I'm right. saying? I didn't get the opportunities because – the ball was spreading around. You know, we had Peter Ward, we had Ron Dugan, we had a lot of other receivers, you know what I'm saying? So my senior year, I was able to get more at-bats, and I knew I was going to get more at-bats. And I told you guys before the season that, you know, by the third game of the year, everybody in the country is going to know who I am. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Not being, not being cocky, you know, just being confident and um, believing in myself and knowing what I'm capable of. And that play really ended up being the difference because Florida still is able to spur you. You're not going to shut them down. They, get a, they do score one more time to cut it to seven points. So yours really was the difference. So that would be really satisfying when you guys would celebrate at the end. And when I was watching a little replay on YouTube of it, first thing I heard from you guys in the locker room about one more left. It was like, it's great to just be Florida and Gainesville. But, I mean, because of what you said happened the last couple of years, that's great. But you've had too many heartbreaks to let it slip away at that point. Yep. That, hey, listen, we, we was happy with the win. But, hey, after that night, it was over with. We forgot about that game. Our main focus was New Orleans, you know, and um, that's what it was because we knew that if we didn't get the job done in New Orleans, that night didn't matter. I can't remember, Snoop. Did I, I think Travis Minor got hurt in that game, or yeah. he didn't play a lot. And I think what makes these teams special back then in that era, and, and I talked about him a lot in the Virginia Tech game too because he was yeah. – I think he recovered that block punch for the touchdown. Um I mean, guys like Jeff Cheney, they're, they're kind of almost overlooked or even forgotten a little bit. But that dude, so was Rock Preston when he played with Warwick Dunn. Yeah. But those dudes are what make of Florida State a great program. I, yeah. guess I just want to hear about what you guys thought. I mean, Jeff Cheney was a really, really good running back. And it made a lot of huge plays for you guys, including that day in game. Yeah, that's what it was. You know, and that's the thing that was special about our team is uh, our depth. You know what I'm saying? Like, we had – second string, third string was that can be first teamers, you know? And um, the beauty of it was our second team and third string teamers, we worked just as hard as the first teamers, you know what right. I'm saying? Make sure that we was prepared to get the job done when our number was called, you know what I'm saying? So we can pr produce, perform just like the first teamers do, you know what I'm saying? So like with me and Pete, you know, it was never nothing personal. Even Pete was taking time away from me, you know, in the field. You know, okay, I didn't care. I was rooting him on, you know what I'm saying, until my opportunity presented himself. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that's just what it was, you know. Like, we just had a strong – we had strong depth. Mm -hmm. And, that's and what in made practice, it. too, you, you mentioned them, um, but Cody in 2000 might have been good at uh, a cornerback season. As any, and Florida State's had some great ones. He was mm -hmm. in 2000 and was really, really good his whole career. Was, again, I think he's just a little bit underappreciated because he didn't have a great career in the pros, but he was awesome at Florida State. What was it like going up against him? Just throw out all the other names over there. Cookie Thomas, guys like that in practice every day. I assume those were wars in practice. Man, it was wars, bro. It made the game so much easier, you know, because I hard we practiced in the competition that we was going. I practiced – if you listen to any player during the 90s, you know what I'm saying? Even until the 80s with Deion days, you were here, you know, them talking about how our tough competition was in practice. And that, it, that's really the case, man. We went hard in practice, man. We fighting each other. Hey, yeah. listen, bro, I don't know you. You my enemy. You know what I'm saying? We teammates, but 
they my enemies at the time, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it was it was it was really competitive, you know, in practice. And we was going against I was going against Samari Rowe, you know, we had the James Coles, you know, the Brian Capers, you know, um the Tay Cody's, Mario Edwards, you know, so we had, you know, great, great secondary, you know. So and then they had us as receivers. So we going against the top cornerbacks in practice. They go we going against the top competition in practice. Right. And then we, we really challenge each other. I mean, going all at it. So once we get to the game field, man, it's a piece of cake. Snoop, that catch, the touchdown, might have been your biggest catch in your career, you said, but it's probably not your signature plan. I can't let you go without asking about this. because it's just I think when people think of Snoop Menace, they think of that 2000 game against Clemson, 98 yards, <laughs> Luke doing a little behind the back with the football. Um, yeah. we got to break that play down for us a little bit because, I, I mean, fans just love talking about that one. Remember. And it was early in the game, right? Huh? Wasn't, it, wasn't it pretty early in the game? Yeah, I think it was the second drive of the game. Yeah, that's what <laughs> yeah. I thought. It was really early. Yeah, um, that was um, – Coach Bowden is brilliant, by the way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, that, was, um, that was his gym play. That was one of his gym plays. Um, can y'all see? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That was one of the coach's um, gym plays. What happened is uh, we never practiced that play, guys. We only ran, you know, the um the second floor where they got the video games and the pool table and whatnot. That was our gym area where we did our walkthroughs. So we just walked through that play. And um because Coach figured plays like that, he didn't want nobody to see. So we just we just walked through it inside. But um it was a perfect play call. It was called at the perfect time. Everything about that play was indicated to the defense that it was gonna be a run. You know, I mean we was on the what, two yard line. Yeah. Um we was in goal line formation. So goal line formation is just one receiver. And we had two tight ends. We had Jeff Tate, Shane at the fullback. You know, so Winky, everybody did their job to perfection. The line blocked down. Winky faked the uh, Chaney. Chaney uh, uh, sold it like he had the ball. The whole defense bid on it, you know. And they was, the, the good thing is they was in cover three, okay. So when, if, when I went in motion and the cornerback went with me, I knew that it was going to be a touchdown, you know, because I had to go in. People don't know that my job was just as important because I had to go block down on the safety and sound it like it was a run, you know. Right. So I went in and cracked back the safety, okay, and um, the cornerback followed me, okay. So once I cracked back on the safety, he went and hit me. As soon as he hit me, I slipped him, and the rest is history, baby. <laughs> I'm gone. You what, are, what are you thinking going down the side? Are you thinking when you're running down to the end, you're thinking, please don't be caught. This is kind of so perfect. Or what, what's going through your mind those last 50 yards? I was in the zone, man. I'm telling you, man, I ain't hear nothing. I didn't hear nothing. I didn't see. All I saw was the uh, the, the media in the end zone. All right, so I'm running to the media. Okay. Right. I saw the media in the end zone. I ain't hear nothing, bro. I was just in the zone. But when you in those moments, you know, even a regular play, you know, um, you know the, the um, diving catches I made. You know, when you're in those moments, you don't hear nothing. You don't see nothing. You just It's just you and the ball, you know? So that's what it was, man. Yeah, I was going to ask, like, you, you're so wide open there, at the, and Winky puts it on you. He doesn't – I don't think he throws it all that high because you're so open. But still in that mm-hmm. moment, I was wondering if it felt like it was 10 seconds, 20 seconds before the ball got to you, or it was instantaneous. It felt like forever, bro. <laughs> you know, yeah. it felt like forever, man. But when it did come, man, I was running as fast as I could, man. But like I say, I saw on the video now that the cornerback, um, the safety from the other side was chasing me. I ain't see him at all, man. Right. I was just running, man. I was just in the zone trying to get to the end. So you don't look up at the video board to see if they're behind you? I, I see that people do that a lot now. I don't even know if Doe Campbell's video board did that back then where it would show a live play, but I didn't know if you were looking up at the video board or not. Nah, I don't think we had a video. I think we just yeah. had the video board from that year. But no, I wasn't looking at the video board. Like I said, I just saw the media in the end zone. I was running to, I was running to the end zone. But I was in it. I was just in the zone, man. I was in the zone. I ain't seen nothing. I ain't hear nothing. I was just trying to get to the end zone, bro. Yeah. Well, you got there. Yeah. That's great stuff, Snoop. Man, I really appreciate you taking some time, spend with us. A lot of Seminole fans will appreciate going down memory lane and some, some fun times. Hopefully, what do you, last thing you think, Florida State, we're going to have some new memories coming up. Florida State, what do you think, Coach Norvell and his staff? I think so. Um, I like what he's trying to implement. He's trying to implement what we talked about is uh, working hard in practice. You know that that's what was missing. 
You know what I'm saying? That's what's needed. You know what I'm saying? The guys um, being a brother, brotherhood, you know, working hard and, and practice and believing, having a goal. What I want them to do is I want them to have a purpose for going into the season. All right? I don't want them to just go into the season, going into the season, you know, um, and I don't want them concentrating on like um, we talked about the individual stats. I want them to focus on doing their job to help the team win. All right, because that's what Florida State is about. All right, is um, win the championship. All right, believe, believe that you believe and set a goal. All right, all right. There's an ACC championship out there. Why not go get it? You know what I'm saying? You know, everybody talking about Clemson. So what? You know what I'm saying? Go get it. Prepare yourself. All right, to do so. All right, discipline yourself. Work and, get, and, 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 and do what you need to do to win. You know, to do your job for the team to help y'all win games. You know, so that's what I want them to do is change the mindset. And I see that Coach Novell, that's what he's focusing on right now. Let's hope. Hey, we're all hoping, my man. We are yes. all hoping this thing gets done. Oh, I'll be there. I'm, 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 yeah, man. You know, with, with me, I'm always going to do my job, do what I can to help the program, you know? Well, we all appreciate your time, Snoop. Stay, you and your family, stay safe, stay healthy. Hope to see you in uh, Tallahassee soon. Hope to see you on the sideline this fall at some point. Oh, you will. When this thing get back right, man, we'll be back out there. I'll be up there. Sounds good. Thank you, man. Thank you very much. No problem. Much love and go nose, baby.